Right, Pap, you have to have a major sign at all. Just okay. Okay. four docs. Perfect. I go. Our upper Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Corona Village Board meeting for April 6, 2020. We're going to do our best with this. Uh, please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so this is the Wheeling Village Board. That clear in case there's anybody going to check. Uh, Clerk Simpson, roll call, please. Okay, Trustee Vogel. Ch you're on mute. Are you on mute? Okay. Trustee no, Papantos. Okay, Trustee Papantos. Here. Trustee Rafato. Here. Trustee Lane. Here. Trustee Kruger. Present. Trustee Vito. Here. President Horker. Here. You have before you the minutes of the meeting for March 16th, 2020. I need a motion for their approval. So moved. Motion, Trustee Papantos. Second. Second. Uh, Trustee Vogel. I like this. You guys are all right there. <laughs> okay. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Papantos. Yes. yes. Trustee Rifato. Yes. Trustee Lang. Yes. Trustee Kruger. Yes. Trustee Vito. Yes. President Horker. Yes. Are there any changes to the agenda? There are no changes this evening. Thank you. Uh, Clerk Simpson, proclamations. Um, Arbor Day, April 24th, 2020. In 1872, Jay Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. This day, the last Friday in April, referred to as Arbor Day, was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. Trees can reduce erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, reducing heating and cooling costs, moderating the ambient temperature, limiting carbon dioxide, producing life-giving oxygen, and providing habitat for wildlife. Trees are renewable resources used in countless paper and wood products, providing wood for our homes and fuel for our fires. Trees in our city increase property values, enhance the econ economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. Trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Patrick Horker, president of the Village of Wheeling, does hereby proclaim April 24th, 2020 as Arbor Day and urges all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to plant, maintain, and protect our trees and woodlands. Thank you, Clerk Simpson. Uh, do we have any citizens' concerns, comments? Nobody's come in. Uh, it should be noted that the front door has been unlocked and there is a sign that we are open for business and... Correct. All right. Excellent. Okay. Staff reports. Consent agenda. Clerk Simpson. Okay. Consent agenda. All items listed on the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the Village Board and will be enacted by one no motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member or citizen so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered after all other agenda items. 11A, resolution authorizing a Memorial Day parade from Wyland Road and Illinois Route 83, McHenry Road, traveling south to Lexington Drive and terminating at Amvest Post 66. 11B, resolution waiving competitive bidding and authorizing the purchase of a Lucas Cardio Pulmonary resuscitation equipment at a cost not to exceed $42,740.88. 11C, resolution authorizing the publication of the official zoning map to document zoning map corrections and recent zoning changes. 11D, resolution establishing compensation plans of the Village of Wheeling for the period May 1st, 2020 through April 30th, 2021. 11E, resolution authorizing the village manager to sell back up to two additional weeks to accrued vacation time during a benefit year. Item 11F, resolution authorizing the village manager to execute a three-month extension to an agreement with GovTemps USA LLC for temporary professional staffing services in an amount not to exceed $40,000. 
Item 11G, resolution authorizing the village president to execute an easement agreement on property owned by Reynolds Consumer Products, PIN 03-10-402-026 for a public draining easement at 777 Wheeling Road. Item 11H, resolution accepting a public bid and approving a contract in the amount of $200,537 with Midwest Well Services DBA Municipal Well and Pump for the Well 7 improvements. There are, if there are any, uh, if there are no questions, I need a motion for their approval. I'm Who's uh, that, Mary Pap? Mary Papantos. Second, second was by, who I'll give it to Joe Vito. Vito, okay. Vito. Uh, Trustee Vogel. You have to unmute, there you go. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Papantos. Yes. Trustee Rafato. Yes. Trustee Lang. Yes. Trustee Kruger. Yes. Trustee Vito. Yes. President Horker. Yes. Uh, that is our abbreviated. That's all the business on the agenda for this. There's meeting. no new business. You've correct. got. Uh, we, we've kept it down to a minimum. Uh, we do have official communications. Mr. Svondilis, you wanted to say something about the census. Thank you. Yes, just wanted to take this opportunity to remind the public that um, being at home and and on your computer is a great time to uh, complete your census paperwork. As of uh, today, the Village of Wheeling response rate is at 48.8%, so less than half of the community has completed their census paperwork so far, which is just a tick below the average in Illinois at 49.8%. Uh, I'm gonna read some information and then uh, provide a little commentary. The time is now. Communities across the U.S. are responding to the 2020 Census. If you have not yet responded, you can do so online in one of 13 languages and find assistance in many more. You may receive multiple mailings from the Census Bureau in March and April of this year, including an invitation to respond to the 2020 Census and follow-up postcards and letters. Millions of households received reminder postcards last week. Census takers will be going door to door beginning in September. If you would like to avoid a visit, please complete the census questionnaire at my2020census.gov at 847-330-2020 or by filling out the paper questionnaire. If you need assistance filling out your census questionnaire, please call the Village of Wheeling Human Services Department at 847-459-2606. All of that information is available on our website, including links to the my2020census.gov page. The census is integral to the health and welfare of the village of Wheeling. To put this into perspective, uh, uh, I was asked to provide some financial data just to show what a loss in population would mean to the budget of the village of Wheeling. And while this isn't always about money, that is the easiest way to illustrate a point. Uh, there are many services through the state government and now through even the federal government with the CARES Act that are based on a per capita formula. Uh, essentially, there are three main categories of how the village of Wheeling receives uh, monies from the state. That would be income tax, state use tax, and MFT revenue. And for every thousand residents that the village gains or loses, there is a net effect of $172,480 per year for the next 10 years. For every 5,000 residents that the village of Wheeling gains or loses, there's a net effect of $862,400 for every year for the next 10 years. Um, again, this really is a plea uh, just to participate in, in the census, to be counted, and uh, it couldn't be easier. It took five minutes. I did mine from my cell phone, uh, probably less than five minutes. So please uh, participate and be counted. And again, if you'd like to avoid someone coming to your home, uh, you have a number of options. The website, the phone number, um, or the paper questionnaire that will allow you to avoid someone coming to your home in September. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Sondilist. Uh Trustee Vito, you had? Yeah, I just, obviously these are some very 
new and difficult times. Um, just want to keep a little bit of optimism out there uh, for all of our residents and, and to try to just kind of quiet the tone a little bit. You get on social media and you have a lot of people yelling at other people and things like that. We're all trying to get through this together. Um, you know, before you, you spout out on, on social media, consider what the other people are going through. So for someone like me, this isn't a very difficult thing to sit in my four bedroom house with finished basement and, basement and, and isolate. But when you have, you know, people in the wine tree apartments and the forum apartments, their kids are out at the park, just, you know, before you call the cops or do anything like that, just think about what they might be going through locked up in their house when it's warm out for the entire day. I'm not trying to excuse the behavior. I'm just trying to get some understanding there. So our police are, are roaming, are, are, are on patrol. Uh, they'll handle the matter. I don't, I don't think we need to be snitching on each other. With all of this freedom that, that we've, we've given up for the greater good, I just want to keep in mind that we might want to keep our leaders a little bit on the rudder. I, it, the biggest fear I have with this is, one, there's been this kind of false dichotomy built where you either want the economy to succeed or you want to save lives. And I, and I think that's a really, really false and simplistic uh, dichotomy to, to, to make. In that vein, I think we can do both at the same time and be mindful of both at the same time, and we have to be as leaders. The epidemiologists, you know, they want to do everything they can to slow the spread of the virus. That's their job. But we as political leaders need to keep in mind the collateral damage, the constitutional damage, the freedoms that this is going to impinge on. I'm not calling for a lift of the shelter-in-place order. I'm just calling for our leaders, at least at the state level, to have some type of goal set for us so we know where we're going. Right now, we're in shelter in place until it gets better. Well, what does that mean? I think that, that we should be asking our leaders, what do they need to see on April 30th where they can say, and, and I don't think it's gonna be Ali Ali Oxen free where everybody runs back out into the bars, but where they can say, hey, we're gonna do some lessen, lessening of the social distancing rules. We're gonna have a limited amount of people to but be able to go into a bar or be able to go to the gym, but you can only have so many people. What do they need to see and where do we need to be where we can get there? That would be very helpful in this time when, when everybody's scared and nobody knows how long this is gonna last and nobody knows what, what the goal is that we're going, going after. So, you know, short of complete eradication, which I don't think is the goal, I think it's a, a, a incumbent upon our leaders to let us know, the governor and in and, 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 and their daily briefings, where they want to see us on April 30th and wh what we will do if we are at that level. Because, of course, nobody thinks it's going to be just a, a complete back to normalcy on, on May 1st. But hopefully, if we do everything that we're supposed to be doing and this lessons, we get to something a little bit better than what we're at today. And that's what we need to know. The other note is just a little hint of optimism would be nice from the leadership as well. I, I watch the daily briefings every day at 2.30, and I hear the numbers come out. And for the last week, it was 937 new, 986 new, 715 new, then a couple spikes, 1209, 1453, then down the last two days, 899 and 1006. And, and there's no cautious optimism with those numbers. The last two days have been pretty good. And in this whole week period, there's only been, on average, 1,029 new cases a day. That sounds like a lot, but in a state of 12 million people, it's, it's a very, very minor fraction of 1% of the state. And if the people two weeks ago, where we had 1,285 people um, diagnosed uh, with the condition, if those people, a majority of them are presumed to be healed, at some point, those numbers are gonna even out as long as we stay in that 1,000 range. And it would be nice to hear some optimism. People need hope now. People need hope, and I understand it's not the end of the game, but you know, a comparison would be like going to a football game and not cheering for the touchdown when the Bears score, because you know Aaron Rodgers might come back and run football down the field and destroy us. Well, that might happen, but you should still cheer for every little gain that we have and give people hope uh, that, that, that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, this is a very trying time. Our businesses are not going to be the same coming out of this. And uh, I just hope we all get it through together. We keep cool heads and just ask our leadership to, to put a little bit of rudder on this ship. Thanks. Thank you, Trustee Vito. Clark Simpson? Anything? I have nothing tonight. No, nothing? Okay. Oh, wait, maybe I should say something, that there are no historical or garden club meetings coming up in the near future. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Um, I, uh, I do, I agree with uh, Trustee Vito. We, um, 
a, a little optimism from the from the higher ups would be nice, like taking note of uh, of what appears to possibly be a plateau in the in the new cases, as opposed to just the gloom and doom. But gloom and doom does sell better. Um, and I do, and I think overall we are doing pretty well. There are people who are out, but you have to get out. You know, just keep your distance. Um, I have. I, I've heard about some businesses that are open that some people don't think should be open, and I, I, I think we all need we all need to do our part to like like the commercials say slow the spread, um, and we all need to be responsible because I mean ultimately everybody who's everybody is going to be contributing a little to. The, the continued increase in cases or a, a decline in the new cases. And if we just keep our heads together and, and deal with this, um, hopefully May 1st will come and, uh, and, uh, and you can let the kids go to the playground without, uh, without worrying about it. It really is in our own hands as far as, as a lot of that goes. Um, it, it's uh, you know it's springtime and, and we're going to do the best we can. I'm really happy with the job everybody here is doing, um, breaking it down into the shifts so that there's no, so that the danger of cross contamination within shifts is minimized. And uh, you know, and it, I mentioned it a little earlier uh, in the year. Check up on your neighbors periodically. You know, you don't have to go knocking on the door, but just uh, you know, maybe ask them how they're doing. Uh, and I have nothing else. I'm not going to belabor the meeting, and we're going to get out Trustee of here. Trustee Papantos wanted us. Oh, Trustee Papantos. I'm sorry. I wasn't looking. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I just wanted to give a shout out to village staff. I, I realize how difficult this is. I don't think people realize our village is open. Um, you know, obviously, the first responders are always there. Thank you, um, Chief Dunn and Chief McIsaac. Public Works, our water is running. Human Services, you know, they're taking calls to help you with your census. This meeting is occurring because of our IT department. You know, um, you know, Luca did a great job getting this set up so that we could social distance yet still be here. Um, water bills are going out and the village is running. You know, just every single department permits are being issued. You know, thank you, John, for, for leading a group of people and making sure everybody's safe and that we are still being able to serve the community. And um, I have to say, oh, I think you spoke more tonight than you have all year. <laughs> I'm proud of you, but at the same point, we can all do our part to help our local businesses, you know, do the, the, the curbside pickout, call. You know, the food's there, the people want it, you know, if you can do it, throw a tip on to help when their servers come back, do something, but I think it's out there for all of us to help. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Papantos. If there's no one else, we need him. Trustee Kruger. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. I, uh, in the same grain as Trustee Papantos, I actually had something written um, in preparation for uh, a thank you and something a little bit more uplifting. Um, first, I wanted to personally thank our frontline first responders, our public works staff, and all essential on-site village staff for their dedication and diligence during this worldwide pandemic. Your efforts are keeping Wheeling safe and functioning during this challenging time, and I'm grateful for each and every one of you. Second, and a special thank you to our IT team for arranging the back office technology needed to keep this village revolving around our community. Our appreciate, I appreciate and your support and expertise. To our staff leadership, you each, especially you, John, are an inspiration to me, and I applaud your dedication to this community during this critical and unprecedented time. And lastly, to our residents and businesses, please keep continue to social distance and protect your families and employees. Your efforts to stay safe and healthy proves that we are all in this together and we will prevail. Please be safe and well. That's all. Thanks. Thank you, Trustee Kruger. Anyone else? If there are... No other comments. Thank you all for your service. And I do need a motion for adjournment. Uh, Bill. 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 Oh, wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> yes, you're right. There you are. Um, you have before you.
Oh, the bills. Yes, you didn't stop me. Wait, I, w I went right to adjournment. I'm well, sorry. That's all right. You have before you the bills for uh, March 12th through April 1st, 2020. I need a motion for their approval. So moved. Second. Second. Motion, Trustee Papantos. Second, Trustee Kruger. Roll call, please. Um, Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papantos? Yes. Trustee Rafado? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. President Horker? Yes. Now, I need a motion for adjournment. So, so moved. moved. Uh, I'll give the motion to second. Trustee Vito and the second to Trustee Rufato. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Luca. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.